Well, my fellow brothers and sisters, peace be with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Ben, and I welcome you to the Restored Ephraim Publications channel. Today, I would like to talk about uh, something that I've started to notice. The, and it's not just in this place. Uh, my eyes are really starting to, to see this in lots of places. And it's the, the concept that we call the United Order, or the Law of Consecration. And uh, I'm seeing this in the Book of Mormon, and I'm also seeing this as I translate the Book of Exodus. Uh, the first half of the Book of Exodus is primarily uh, like history stuff. And then the second half is like commandments and rules and regulations and stuff. Uh, as I, I, I have completed halfway through the book of Exodus, and so I am uh, into the right, uh, translating the, the commandments stuff. And what I am starting to notice is that the one of the purposes of the Law of Moses is to teach people to prepare themselves to live the United Order. And I have recently learned that is because the fullness of the Gospel of Jesus Christ is the United Order. And the Law of Moses, it doesn't require the living of the United Order. But what it did is it established laws that would uh, get the people used to ideas within the United Order. And so again, if, if you can't keep those laws that are in the Law of Moses, then you cannot keep the fullness of the United Order because it helps to, to teach that because it's a job. The, the, the job of the Law of Moses is to teach us to uh, follow Christ. Now, today I would like to, to show you just one thing that I found in the Book of Mormon, but I'm also seeing this pattern in the Book of Mormon of this Israelite community that was attempting to live the Law of Consecration, or the United Order. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get more into this in, in future videos, but we see in the Book of Mormon that the Nephites, uh, in the beginning, their goal was to live beyond the Law of Moses, they kept the Law of Moses because that's what they were required to do. But they, they tried to, to, to live the, the higher law. And now when I see it, I recognize that the, the Nephites were attempting to live the United Order. And what they would do is that they would live it and they'd prosper, prosper, prosper. Then they'd get prideful and then they would start uh, being dis, uh, disunity, uh, breaking apart into classes, and then comes a decline, then great judgment, destruction, then repentance. They would start to live the United Order again, and then go through that same cycle, and then fail, and then crash down back to that. And, and that was a, a, a repetitive cycle the cycle being um, the, 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 the greatest cycle being after Jesus Christ visits them for about 200 years then they start going down from that and then finally uh, by 400 years uh, it's completely gone now today what I'd like to read to you, to you comes from 2nd Nephi chapter 1 starting verse 21 and uh, this is Lehi talking to his children 
uh, Lehi being the, the father and leader of the group of Israelites that fled from Jerusalem to come to the Americas. And it says, And now that my soul might have joy in you, and that my heart might leave this world with gladness because of you, that I might not be brought down with grief and sorrow to the grave, arise from the dust, my sons, and be men, and be determined in one mind and in one heart, united in all things, that ye may not come down into captivity, that ye may not be cursed with a sore cursing, and also that ye may not incur the displeasure of a just God upon you unto the destruction, yea, the, destruction, the eternal destruction of both soul and body. Awake, my sons, put on the armor of righteousness, shake off the chains with which ye are bound, and come forth out of obscurity and arise from the dust. So now let's break this down. So this is uh, Lehi. He's speaking specifically to his sons, uh, Laman and Lemuel, uh, who uh, were uh, not uh, very righteous. Uh, And uh, they had a lot of problems uh, with uh, not doing things right. Uh, but let, let's break this down. Uh, starting in the middle, I just want to focus on this part. It says, uh, uh, Be determined in one mind and in one heart, united in all things. So, this is clearly an indication that it was the, the desire of, of Lehi for his sons to live in in something that was similar to the United Order. And uh, this is is proven by, it says, one mind, one heart, and united in all things. And when it says all things, it means all things, uh, including in temporal things. And that's one of the requirements of the United Order, that we have all things uh, in common. Uh, because all things belong to the Lord, and if we are joint heirs with the Lord, then we we share in the, in the Lord's inheritance. Now Lehi understood that if they were not of one mind, one heart, and united in all things, uh, he says uh, uh, that he, he may not come down uh, into captivity. Uh, the, the, the system that Satan has is all about enslaving us and the mercantile system that the world likes to use today that is all about enslaving people and so the only way out of Satan's economic system is to adopt the Lord's system, which is the United Order, where we are of one mind, one heart, and united in all things. And he says, uh, that you may not be cursed with a sore cursing, and also that you may not incur the displeasure of a just God upon you under the destruction, yea, the eternal destruction of both soul and body. So where Satan's system thrives, uh, there are wars, there are famines, uh, there are destructions, there are cursings, and it incurs the displeasure of a just God because uh, it is unjust. Satan's system is unjust, Uh, and it it leads down to to destruction, not only the destruction of the body, but it can lead also to eternal destruction, which is the destruction of of the soul, spiritual death. And so, uh, 
let's look in our own day. Uh, we are not living in the United Order like we ought to be. Uh, I understand the difficulties. I understand that it's human nature to to not have charity for for another. Uh, the Holy Spirit taught me recently that the proof that you have charity is that you are able to live the United Order. And so uh, I understand that we lack charity as a people. Uh, we lack, uh, uh, we're full of vanity, pride, disunity. I also understand the, the, uh, that um, the American government is very aggressive when it comes to systems that seek to oppose uh, the satanic system. And so uh, the biggest problem uh, among those who, who actually did wish to to keep the United Order in the early days of the church was the persecution brought on by Americans. Another truth I learned recently is that the, 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 the people who are leading the charge against uh, persecuting the church, uh, they used polygamy to do it, but they didn't actually care about polygamy. They were using polygamy to, ra to, to, to ra uh, get a rise out of, the, out of the people in order to justify persecuting the church. But what they were really trying to do was to prevent the people from creating a separate economic system, separate from the system that the United States was using. And so now, because we've, we've given up uh, trying to do those things, uh, look at what has bef befallen our people. Uh, we have poverty. Uh, we have disunity in the homes. Uh, we, we have a lot of people in, in the church getting divorced. Um, look at how uh, unhealthy we are. Uh, the Lord says in, in, uh, in, the, in the scriptures that if, if we keep his, uh, all his ways, the Lord will not put sickness upon us. Uh, there's all these, these all these horrible things uh, are have fallen upon us, and we need to understand that this is a a a, a just chastening upon the people, in the hope that they realize that the way they are doing things are wrong. And so either they must realize it and, and begin the repentance process, or the Lord will increase the chastening upon the people. And how long that process is going to take, I have no idea. Uh, but it's, it's, it's on the way. It's already begun. Uh, you can see the effects right now. If, if you have the spiritual sense to, to see it. But all the problems we have in our society uh, is because we're not doing all the things the Lord said to do, and this includes the United Order. And when you look at the Book of Mormon, I can now say that I, I didn't, when I, when I made the video a few videos ago about the, the six things that are the purpose of, of, of the Book of Mormon, uh, I didn't really see this yet. I am now adding this as a seventh thing to my list. That the purpose of the Book of Mormon is to show you the blessings when you strive to keep the United Order and the cursings from when you abandon the United Order. And the, the, the Lord also understands our human frailty um, I, I believe that it is 
even if we can't keep the united order, we need to be going upwards step by step, trying to to uh, to find ways that we can can live it wherever we can. And if we do that, the Lord will accept that uh, because He understands that that we have human frailties. But when He sees that we're trying, then He He gives us uh, assistance. Uh, he might also try us to see if we actually believe uh, what we're doing. And uh, if we stick with it, that's when the blessings come. But uh, uh, this is the, 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 the word that Lehi said to his, his sons. He says, Awake, my sons, put on the armor of righteousness. Shake off the chains with which ye are bound. And come forth out of obscurity and arise from the dust. And this same statement could be directed to us. The armor of righteousness, what does armor do? Armor protects us. Uh, what would protect us from the Babylonian system? Uh, our armor of righteousness is the united order and doing everything ourselves within it and not depending upon Babylon for the things that we need. It says, shake off the chains with which ye are bound. The chains that bind us is this satanic Babylonian system, political, economic, medical, education, religious, uh, and whatsoever of the of the crafts out there that are holding us uh, down uh, into the Babylonian system. And when I say religious, I don't necessarily mean I, I don't mean the 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 the, the church. Uh, what I what I mean is the. The, the, the false philosophies that Babylonian system likes to present. Uh, these are as much a religion as anything else. And it says, uh, Come forth out of obscurity and arise from the dust. Uh, we are obscure in the Babylonian system. Uh, we are... Uh, we are small, we are weak, we are poor. Uh, this is this is this is obscurity. Uh, but the Lord can give us the power to arise from the the dust. And the dust represents the filth and the systems of Babylon that gets our clothes dirty. We can shake those things off if we have the faith to. And even if it's a generational program, step by step, if each generation does better, then we're moving in the, in the, in the right direction. The problem is, I'm seeing, the, I'm seeing the exact opposite. I'm seeing each generation gets worse and worse and worse. And that is the exact opposite of what needs to happen. And how do we fix this now? I, I don't know. Um, personally, I think this is going to play out. Uh, and there's going to be some judgments that have to fall upon us as a people. But even then, the Lord will not forget his promises. But we need to turn to the Lord and, and recognize that we're in the state we're in because we have ignored the, these warnings from the, the Book of Mormon like the one we studied today. I'll leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.